All right, everyone, welcome back. We're excited for another session from the World Creativity and Innovation Summit. First, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors to help us make this a reality. Thank you to Haggerty Digital and also to My Favorite Art Place. We we're very lucky that they were able to help uh, finance this event and put it together. For our next session, we are very excited for the topic of Word and Image, Public School and Community Center Partnership Model. And to give you more context about this presentation, budget challenges for the arts in the US are nothing new. With over 20 years ago, a creative partnership was formed between the Pinellas County Schools Arts Department and the nonprofit Moraine Arts Center, a community arts center with the mission of connecting the community to art. In this panel, you will hear, hear from the three key perspectives essential to this program success. Amanda Cooper, as the curator of exhibitions at the Marine Arts Center, will detail how the experience students and families share in during the gallery exhibition transforms their understanding of the impact of art and potential career pathways associated with retiring, refining, and developing the skill. Former Pinellas County Schools Fine Arts Director Sue Castleman, now a member of the Moran Board of Trustees, will speak to the public school processes and curriculum alignment. Artist Riley Corlett will speak on her experiences as a student and how it influenced her journey as a professional artist. So Sue, with that said, I'll let you go ahead and take it away. Okay, good afternoon. I'm gonna introduce Amanda Cooper and she's gonna share just a few more words before we begin. Um, hi, my name is Amanda Cooper and I'm the curator of exhibitions for the Morian Arts Center. Um, I'm a St. Pete native and I've been with the Morian for 22 plus years. All right, and I'm Riley Corlett. Um, I am now working with the Morian Arts Center. Uh, I was a student and Pinellas County School Systems. I attended Pinellas County Center for the Arts at Gibbs High School, as well as John Hopkins and Perkins Elementary. And I will be talking more about my experiences with the Word and Image exhibition and what I'm doing now as an artist um, further down the line, now that I'm kind of working out in the community as well. And I'm Sue Castleman. I'm currently a board member of the, on the Board of Trustees from the Maureen Arts Center. And I was the visual arts supervisor for Pinellas County Schools. And I was, I guess, one of the founding um, people who started the Word and Image exhibitions. Amanda? Word and Image is a partnership between Pinellas County Schools and the Maureen Arts Center. You may be asking yourself, what is the Maureen Arts Center? The Morian is a community art center and we have roots dating back all the way to 1917. So we're a 104 year old arts institution. And our mission is simple. We connect people with art and we do this in a variety of ways, mainly um, with our free and engaging contemporary art exhibitions. And we also offer classes in all visual arts mediums for adults and children. Our website, as you see there, is www.morianartcenter.org. I would encourage you to get on there after this and see all that we have to offer. We have a lot of our exhibitions online and we have some digital class offerings online too. And we're located in beautiful downtown St. Petersburg, Florida. Pinellas County Schools is a large, large urban school district in the state of Florida. In Florida, school districts are divided by county. So there's 67 school districts in Florida. And again, Pinellas County being a large concentrated urban school district, we have a strong diversity in our school district. And we also have a variety of socioeconomic levels in our school district. The thing I can share is we have had probably for over 30 plus years, a very strong K through 12 visual arts program where every student in elementary school, K through five receives weekly instruction in the visual arts by a certified art teacher. And we have been coordinating visual arts exhibitions throughout the county with many other arts institutions. And we invite obviously the public schools, the private schools and the charter schools to all submit artwork for not only the word and image exhibitions but other exhibitions that our school district hosts for the school year. So what exactly is the word and image exhibition program? Let's learn more about it five-minute video. Each year, students in grades four through 12 participate in the Word and Image exhibition at the Morian Arts Center. Students are challenged with creating a work of art and writing centered on an annual theme. The 2017-2018 theme was, Did You Ever See? 
Let's see how art students have answered this visual problem with writing and artwork. Have you ever seen a day combined where the moon and sun collide? A day of something so bright, it just might blind your eye. It's so beautiful that if you were to jump into a pool, you would not swim up for air. Did you ever see a person that makes you feel happy? This person is my best friend and she is always there for me. She always has a smile on her face and I see her at school, talk to her on the phone and see her at parties. She has a big smile and short black Afro hair. She is tall, has brown eyes and glasses and really white teeth. She is always happy. Have you ever seen inside a human's mind? Not an x-ray of the body, no. Have you ever seen what is actually going on inside someone's brain? The brain can hold what happened to the person in the past and present. There are two types of people in this world, those who believe in ideology and those who believe in materialism. But sometimes the inside of the mind and the nature of it can be materialistic and ideological as well. The mind of an interesting person is like creative materialism. It is creative and real, yet no one can understand it. So, have you ever seen creative materialism? Sometimes in life, we feel like we will either remain consistently happy or depressed. The truth is that we have no control over the consequences and rewards life throws at you. When you fail in life, our hopes to prosper may try to fly. Did you ever see people fall and get back up? Did you ever see what was outside of your nest? Where you are safe and warm, wrapped cozy under blankets and layers and feathers and wings? Have you seen what you can do when you are not secure? Come out, come out, my dear. Come out and build your own. Currently, everything we hear, say, and do is influenced by the media in some way. I used a black, fine point pen to stipple and hatch and color pencil for shading to create a monochromatic image. This represents how everything we see is from one point of view, gray area being the confusion we get from this. I drew a brain coming out of the TV to show how the media is our brain, being our sole giver of information. I purposely cut out an obituary page from the newspaper clippings on the ground to show how these words are killing our brains. The boy in the middle is in a zombie-like haze, that is why I whited out his eyes to show the confusion and lack of real world response. The picture framed hanging on the wall behind him is an out of service image we get on our TV screens. This is to show how we lost our signal, or in other words, the ability to think for ourselves. Finally, the reason I did the swirls on the back wall is to show how we are in a constant hypnosis and there is no escape. Sometimes you don't want to be seen or noticed. You get this comfortable feeling when you blend in with a crowd and no one seems to realize you're there. Or you might want to be noticed for the things you are capable of and can accomplish, but not actually be seen. I think you should try to be seen and acknowledged for who you are, even if that's uncomfortable. To convey this inner struggle, I captured a scene with an extreme color contrast, which conveys a dark, uncertain mood. The umbrella helps the model blend in with the surrounding environment, while her white boots symbolize hope and suggest her potential to eventually raise the umbrella and be seen. So now you know a little bit about what the word and image exhibitions are all about. And now we want to tell you a little bit about the history. Back in probably 1996, at the time, the Morian Art Center was called the Art Center. 
And it was in an old building, very small space, probably about the size of a large um, home. And it moved over to the building that you can see far on the, on the left there. And it was a furniture store. And when they took that building over, um, I got a call from the director at the time and they shared that they were going to have space for student exhibitions, what could we do? And they wanted to exhibit student artwork kind of like other exhibitions in our community. And at the time, the writing component in our school's curriculum was really um, getting a lot of attention as our state was doing some um, assessments for writing called Florida Writes. So we came up with the idea about combining a work of art and a written piece. And that way we could support the writing curriculum in our schools and also support our visual arts programs. And the idea would be that the classroom teachers and, and the art teachers could team together to create these works of art. And um, it was really an exciting start. And as you can see, the, the Morian was, we started in a very small gallery space and then expanded um, continuously. Amanda, do you want, Amanda's gonna share some more. Um, yes, as you can see the um, image on the right, our, um, our beginnings in our new building back in the late 90s was a little less than glamorous. Um, but in, starting in 1999, we had a beautiful new dedicated uh, student gallery named after the Rizzer family, Bud and Fran Rizzer, our local um, arts philanthropists. And we named the gallery for them because their passion is student art. And um, the couple that you see there on the far right is um, the couple in the back is Bill and Hazel Huff. And the Huff family, they, um, Bill and Hazel have since passed, but they are um, big supporters. They were big supporters of the arts in St. Petersburg. Um, he was an investment banker and the um, Huff Family Foundation has been our founding sponsor since the very beginning. And here they're pictured at the first opening of the Word and Image um, exhibition reception um, with two student winners. So we just wanted to show you guys what the, what the gallery looked like um, at the time. So how does Word and Image, the exhibition program work? Well, it starts by picking a theme. We change out the theme every year. So in 24 years, that means almost 24 themes. We've, we've repeated a few themes here and there. Um, but the theme is very important because it um, gives the students something to challenge them with. It helps them to um, solve a visual problem. They have to create a work of art and do a written piece based on a theme. It can't be just whatever they want. It needs to be based on a theme. And it also helps from the exhibition side, it helps make the exhibition cohesive. Um, so the theme is very important and that's how we start. And it's a, the picking the theme is a joint effort with um, myself as the curator and the visual arts supervisor at the Pinellas County School side. And they also have teachers um, give their input because the teachers are the ones implementing this project. So we want to pick a theme that is um, engaging to them. So um, some of the themes over the years have come from books and some of them are pictured on the screen there. And the books were really helpful. Each of the teachers, I believe, got one of these books. So they were able to show their students, look, here's the theme. And then here's how other artists have solved this visual problem. One of my favorites was the one on the left, the On My Block um, theme, which we did. I think we've done that for two years, where the students had to um, think about something that was in their house or in their neighborhood um, that was important to them. And they made a work of art and a written piece based on that. I think the most successful themes are when the student has to do something that's very personable, personal to them. Um, that's when the work is the most engaging and you get the most interesting um, work and writing from them. Um, over the years, another, another memorable one was back in 2001, we came up with a theme of superheroes um, where the students could talk about somebody who was a hero to them in their artwork and it just so happened that show opened in um, October 2001 which of course was just a month after 9-11 so um, 
it couldn't have been a more perfect theme to follow that tragedy where you had students that were writing about heroes. They were writing about police officers and firefighters and all kinds of things. It was just, it was just really a touching, um, timely theme without us really knowing about it. Um, so those are just some examples of the themes we've done over the years. Okay, now, how does it start? So first of all, every year, we team up with the Morian and the Pinellas County Schools, and we create a call for entry, and that is sent out to all of our teachers. It's also communicated on the Pinellas County Schools visual arts calendar. That's the landing place that all our teachers, whether they're in public, private, or charter school, go to each year because there are over 20 plus exhibitions throughout the community that they can participate in. So this is a very timely place for them to um, look for the call for entry and then they can see. Remember, we have actually four of these exhibitions. We have two elementary exhibitions because elementary has such a large amount of students and one middle school and one high school exhibition during the year. Now, the work, uh, probably for about the last 12 years, we have done digital submission of the work. And the work is all uploaded to an online database for judging. And again, about 10 years ago, we created a judging process that is modeled after advanced placement art studio assessment and some of the international baccalaureate arts assessment where a panel of four trained art teachers individually blindly score the work based on a rubric. And then we take those scores, it's a, and I'll show you that in just a minute, it's a um, four, three, two, one rubric. And they don't communicate with each other, they look at the work and they score it, it's blind. They only know the name of the artwork and the grade level of the student. They do not know what school they came from, they come from, or their names of the students. The works then are those scores by four teachers that's averaged out, and then the top scoring artworks move to selection by the Morian staff, and Amanda will share a little bit more about that selection. Um, yes, so the a couple of us from the Morian, we adjudicate the artwork, everyone who scores a four automatically gets put into the exhibition. We can take about 75 pieces um, for each exhibition. So say if there's 50 fours, well, we still need 25 pieces. So then we look at the ones that got threes and then we select work based on that. And that's just a, um, a process where uh, myself and a, a coworker will go through them all and discuss them and, uh, and agree which ones that we select until we get to the 75 that we need for the exhibition. So let's take a look at the rubrics and I know this might be a little bit hard to see and we could um, send these to you, but basically we created this through a research based project that was done throughout the country um, with other school districts on how again to use a rubric to score artwork. And the other thing that this does is it informs not only the teacher when this when they get the score, the average score back about the work that they submitted it informs the teacher and it helps the teachers then inform the students. And you can see a score of four, which is excellent. And all of the words there talk about strong. We talk about communication of personal expression, evidence of the theme, and um, we talk about different art components, elements of art, principles of design, and originality. And again, four teachers look at that. And, there, and the work that you're seeing below that is exactly what the teacher looks at when they score the work. So we have, again, an excellent score, a proficient score, and then we have an emerging score. We want to really encourage not only the teachers and the students, about their work endeavors that we want them to know that they're emerging, that there's some evidence of the theme, there's some evidence of critical thinking. And again, they can go back and look at scores of other artwork and see how students were able to get a higher score, a strong or an excellent score. The beginning score is again, I can tell you that in the last probably five years, we have so few beginning scores because we've had this rubric there, we've had this ability to be able to communicate to teachers and to students what we're looking for, what is, is 
what will make a work of art worthy of being exhibited at the Morian Art Center. The other thing that we do is we have done extensive training for our visual arts teachers, probably for the last 15 years, we started by offering them training in how to um, incorporate the writing piece into their classroom if they didn't have a classroom teacher or a language arts teacher to work with them. But we also wanted to train them on how to really tease out and teach and instruct for the highest quality of work. And I can tell you that this process, again, for well over 10 years has just improved work all over and we're really excited and and the other thing we get is we never have people going well gee how how did this one get into the show and how come this one's not we have just a very strong rubric to be able to explain how works are selected for the show and then how students and teachers can improve not only on their artwork but on instruction so here, is, here are a few images of our RISER gallery, our dedicated student gallery, and how the word and image exhibition looks today. It's, uh, as you can see, it's, it, it's a, a lot different from our, our beginnings back in 1997. So I wanted to stress that we, um, first of all, the gallery that you see here is adjacent to our, um, our main galleries here at the Morian. So people who come to visit to see our galleries will also see um, whatever's in our student gallery at the time. And I wanna stress that we treat this exhibition like all of our quote unquote professional artist exhibitions. We frame the work, um, all of the work comes to us in 18 by 24 inch size and we have frames that match that. And so we frame the work when it comes in, we hang it just like we would any professional gallery exhibition, it gets labels and all that. Um, we really want these kids to feel like professional artists when they come in here and see their work on the wall. Um, and once, when, while we're installing it, we just take them and group them according to what myself and my staff thinks looks good together, theme-wise, color-wise, whatever. We don't necessarily group the same schools together, um, but we want to configure them in an engaging, easy-to-read way. Um, this would be a good time for me to mention that um, we do have a lot of people come through this gallery who might not have known about this show, don't have any students in the show, but they are just so enthralled by what these students have made and what they have to say. The one thing that's one thing that's special about this exhibition is the statement part. You know, when you go into a gallery and you see a work of art, you don't necessarily know what the artist was thinking, but with the word and image exhibition, the statement is right there and people spend so much time in the galleries looking at the art and reading what the students have to say and it's just a really engaging um, project for both the students and the visitors who come to see the show. Um, also, so I mentioned earlier 75 pieces per show on average, which means that over the past 24 years we have had 6600 uh, students participate in this exhibition 6600 students work has been on the walls of this gallery since the beginning. So the Word and Image Exhibition Award Ceremony is a big, big deal, as you can see from these photos. Um, we do host, the Morian hosts an award ceremony for each of these four exhibitions that we do per year. And they are just such fun events. We usually have about 200 to 250 people that cram into the gallery. Um, we do punch and cookies. The students and their families come. Sometimes you have multiple generations of families. They're all dressed up, as you can see. It's just a really, um, it's just a really fun time and a really meaningful time for these families. And we want to make a big deal out of these students because this is an important thing, and you just never know you know, what these students are gonna do afterwards. Um, and for many of these families, it's their first time in an art gallery. So that's pretty cool too. Um, each student at the award ceremony receives a certificate with their name on it, a certificate of participation. And they also uh, receive a five pack of tickets to um, the Morian's other uh, locations. And it's a $100 um, value. Um, so that's an important thing that we do for them. And also we have awards for every single exhibition. We have three top awards that um, 
those students for each show, the three top awards get a um, scholarship for a free week of summer camp at the Morian. And um, also honorable mentions, we give them art supplies. So it's, it's a really big deal. And we have a local uh, arts administrator that comes in or a Morian staff member that judges each show. So it's a really special time. Now, as the visual arts supervisor and now current board member, I can tell you that for the past 20 plus years and over 6,000 students, lives have been changed. Every time I have been at the award ceremony and present and look out and see the families, see the art teachers, see the students, I know that these children will never forget this day. And what this does for children and students is it shows that they have a strength, they're important, they have value. And I can tell you over the years that I was the visual arts supervisor, I had so many stories from parents, from teachers, and from outside community members come up and say that this was probably the most spectacular thing for their child because it valued them, it showed their strengths, you know, it celebrated them. And the most important thing, it celebrates an individual creative endeavor. And, and I can't tell you how important this is for all the students that are exhibiting artists every year, but even the students that submit the work because it's become something of an honor to be able to have your work exhibited and come to the awards ceremony. We kiddingly say that we probably bring the most amount of people in during the awards ceremony. Sometimes we have to be concerned about uh, we have too many people in there, um, but it is really an incredible experience for everybody. And for everybody, Amanda and myself and staff and our teachers, um, all the hard work behind it, it just comes together on that awards ceremony day. So now we're gonna talk about some memorable moments and some alums of the program. So one of the joys of having such a long running program, and for me personally, having been part of it for a couple of decades, is you get to see some of these students um, who are in the show move on to do other things and you get to keep track of them over the years, which is a really a real honor to be able to do that. Um, some of the alums of Horton Image have actually gone on to become Pinellas County School art teachers and their own students have um, been in the show, which that's pretty cool to see. Um, one alum that stands out to me is Quentin Murata. And there's Quentin on the left side there. That's um, him with his certificate. I think he was a senior in this photo. He went to the Arts Magnet Middle School, John Hopkins Middle School here in Pinellas County, and then the Pinellas um, County Center for the Arts at Gibbs High School. And um, he had a, his senior thesis show here at the Morian too. And then he went on to UF to graduate in 2018 with a degree in sculpture. There he is on the right today. Um, and just last year, he actually had a solo exhibition of his sculpture um, in our main gallery. So um, that was really exciting to be able to see him grow as an artist over the years and, and get to know him first as a word and image participant. Next, Riley Corlett. Hi. Um, yeah, so the word and image was one of those things like it happened every year. So we always, I always looked forward to seeing that, of course. Um, and growing up, I went to a lot of the arts magnet schools and some of them, the ones that I went to happened to be in the more lower income areas of the urban area. And, you know, seeing that I think it's a great opportunity because it gives people and opera children an opportunity to do something they may not have access to in any other sort of environment. Um, and so it, overall, I think it's a wonderful opportunity in that sense. And, you know, even as an adult, being able to see your own art artwork in a gallery is almost awe inspiring to say the least. And, um, you know, recently I, I had to actually juror I was part of the jury process of this most recent round of elementary works that went up and what it, being in that gallery and having to look at all 70 something of these pieces it was it almost put me back into that perspective of being a child and being able to see my artwork in a gallery and it changed how I viewed and how I made my selection and needless to say it was not an easy easy job in any any sense of the word um and you know it, it's just 
a wonderful opportunity in that sense because being a child in your your um, very formative age, you know, that really is going to form how you see yourself in the future, those positive interactions. And I've always been a very strong believer in the arts should be part of the community. Um, I've done projects in the community on my own as part of community service in which I have fundraised and gotten art supplies for children in need and all that uh, back when I was in high school. And I also had my own senior thesis show. Now it wasn't at the Morian, but I learned those key skills and in how to exhibit works. So all of those things can be applied to any sort of thing in the future. Um, and that being said, you know, as for what I'm doing currently, I'm now working towards a business degree. So I didn't necessarily choose to go down the arts route, but that doesn't mean I won't pursue some sort of art in the future. You know, I'm a firm believer that business, you know, you can basically do anything with that degree. So who knows what's to say in the future? I mean, I'm still kind of working on that, but um, yeah, definitely. And as you can see from my art, I tend to focus a lot on animalistic forms and, you know, using the word and image, I find it hard to express myself through writing. So that being said, being able to, you know, come up with something and then write a statement for it. I still find myself applying that to my current arts where I'm even sometimes including poetry and even, you know, long written statements. And I've even gone down the path making of making zines, which are like little booklets of art. So it's definitely been an influence down the road now that I'm an adult as well. Let's meet Carlson Gooding, another alumni. I like to make new friends when I ride my bike through my neighborhood. My parents tell me to always wear a helmet and I know I should. I like to chase my friends and they try to run away like hens. When I ride my bike, I like to see all of the leaves on the trees. You want a scholarship or something? Yes, I want a scholarship because the art district loved my artwork. So yeah. I, I was really, really excited for that. Yeah, I bet you were proud. I was proud, my brother was proud, my family was proud because that was my first time I really get to see my brother to one of my actual events. Yeah. What do you like about being an artist, a, a visual artist and a, and a musician? What do you like about being, being able to do that? Because I'm very a visual learner. Mm -hmm. so, so when I see things, I, I start to comprehend better. So, also with music, I also love because I have to hear the music. If I hear music, I get, I get to have an idea of how to play it. When I see a piece of art, I should say, I found I find a different way to make it different. <sighs> so what does word and image look like during COVID? How do you put on a countywide um, student exhibition um, when half your student population is distance learning? Um, well, I'm happy to say pretty much just like any other year. So this year kind of surprised me. We had um, the same amount of entries as we do any other year, the same high quality of artwork. And again, kudos to the students and to the teachers who are guiding them and the parents who are supporting them that even through all the challenges that we faced um, as a society and as a, um, as, a, as a school district this year, things feel kind of normal in terms of the word and image project. Um, when we were looking for a theme this year, we knew we had to do something that addressed um, our, our times, our different times now. And we came up with what the world needs now as the theme. And the prompt that each of the students got is during these challenging times, hope and gratitude have become powerful resources for creative inspiration. How would you express these feelings using visual art and writing? 
So that is the prompt that each of these students got. And some of these are examples of artwork that we received. These are from our elementary school exhibition. I know you can't read the, um, the written part, so I'm gonna read it. The one on the left that says joy, the written part says, our world needs a lot more joy among people. Being joyful has a huge effect on the community because when you have joy, everyone else will want it. Being joyful can be an effect of being with your family or friends or just doing something you love to do. Another, other people's joy can also cheer you up if you're sad or depressed. These are the reasons there should be more joy in the world. And the one on the right says, what the world needs now are more pets because pets make people feel safe. People can snuggle with their pet and feel comfort when they are scared. So the piece on the left with the hand says, I hope we can get rid of COVID-19 soon. Once we find a cure for the virus, I think the world will be a better place because we won't need to wear a mask anymore and we can breathe in the fresh air again. I miss what our world was like before COVID-19 where I could hug my friends and didn't have to stay six feet apart. After we find a cure and COVID-19 is gone, the world will be so happy again. People also won't be getting as sick as often. The piece on the right says, what the world needs is better world leaders. Some of our world leaders don't make very good choices. We need leaders who will fight for the people. It doesn't matter if they are from the red states or the blue states. We are supposed to be the United States, not the divided states. Wise words from a third grader. So the award ceremonies, as we discussed, this is what they look like before COVID. Lots and lots of people. And here's what the award ceremonies look like during COVID. Very different, very different. Um, so how do you conduct an award ceremony during COVID? Well, you do it virtually, of course. It's definitely not the same. We don't have punch and cookies. We don't have all the families coming here. We don't have the parental paparazzi that you usually see all the, all the cameras flashing. Um, however, we do invite the award winners. So these are some of the families that you see here. We do invite the award winners to come. And, um, but there are some benefits of having a virtual reception. One is that um, anybody can tune in. Before it was just, you know, you had to physically be there to hear the award ceremony. Now it's on Zoom. We send out a Zoom link to all the participants. They can share it with their extended family. So anybody can, can view it. The other thing is um, it, it caused us to pivot and have the artwork online too. So um, now anyone can see the art exhibition. And um, so that is, a, I would say, a benefit that even after COVID, we'll, we'll carry this forward. Well, we would like to thank you and now entertain any questions that you might have. Um, we know that this was a lot to take in and digest, and, and we hope you got a we got an understanding about what the word and image exhibitions are and how they're um, created and how the students exhibit the work and how and how much our students have learned from from really being these artists. So we'll throw it over to our moderator and see what questions we might need have for us. All right. Thank you very much. That was very helpful to hear about the world of exhibitions. And I love the, can you go back to the slide that shows all the, the smiling faces and everyone happy to be a part of that experience? I know it's just uh, very, very exciting. Oh, uh, one of the last slides there. Oh, I'm going to go to the, that one. Oh. That, that's, a, that's an old one. That's an old slide. Oh, that's the old one. Oh. That's before <laughs> COVID. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, can you show us the, the current one again? Other, I can put up some other slides that um, you probably want this one. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yes, all the happiness. Yeah, very, very joyful. So thank you for sharing. And if anyone has any questions, and now's the time to go ahead and put it in the Q&A or in the chat box. So we'd love to hear from you as they're taking the time to talk about the art that they've been a part of. And one question came in, they asked, do arts impact academics? Oh, tremendously. This is Sue Castleman. 
Um, I'm, like I said, former visual arts uh, supervisor and a former art teacher. And, and, and you know, as you heard Carlson talk about, he's a visual learner. And um, I think that the arts, and especially when they do this exhibition, they have to solve a problem. And it's not only a visual problem, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's a writing problem that they have to solve. And, and you heard Riley talk about how, you know, she didn't feel very confident in her writing and now she has done more writing. So I, I really believe that it is the key. And if you think about how kids learn, I've always said it's image, text and sound is how we all learn. And we've all learned that way for a long, long time. All right, thank you for sharing. And so yes, once again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in the chats. We'd love to hear from you as they're taking the time to share their expertise today. Can you dive, can each of you dive deeper into the emotional benefit of putting these together and, and the importance of these? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, this is Riley speaking, by the way. Um, emotionally, it, it, it's very, I, I think I touched upon this when I spoke. Uh, it's inspiring for children to be able to see their work in such a professional setting. You know, those are your formative years and a lot of your early experiences that impacts how you end up maturing as an adult. And um, now speaking from experience, I now that I'm kind of going out into the artistic community um, and I'm you know being invited to go into other shows and I'm submitting to shows even as an adult seeing my works in a professional setting has, you know, it has almost the same effect. I'm just like, wow, this is really something that like, you know, I can do. So it's definitely emotionally very, very important to the young people that we are reaching out to with these shows. Um, one thing I would add is um, because of some of the themes that we've had, um, I mean, we can talk about the effect of it on the student, but the effect on the families. Um, for instance, there's been some themes we've had where the student really opens up and says some very personal things about themselves, about their families. And we've had families come in and say, oh my gosh, I didn't know my student or my child felt this way about, um, about this, or I didn't know about this. And it's very meaningful for the families, for the, um, for the, one year we did a My Personal Hero um, theme and we had families coming in for the reception. And I remember there was one family where the student wrote about his grandfather. His grandfather was his personal hero. And his grandfather happened to be there at the award ceremony and didn't know what the student's artwork looked like, but then saw it there. And just, you know, there was crying, there was hugging. And it's just, um, it's just such a meaningful thing. So not only just for the students to participate, but, but for the families too, to, to, to see um, the artwork that their students create or their children create. Love that, thank you. And then can you uh, show us uh, the website where we can view all this work for the public? Mm, I'll have to put that in the chat. Is that? Or, or is it is it publicly available? No, no worries if it's it is, not. It is publicly available. And maybe what I could verbally say right now is, is that it is Pinellas County Schools and do a Google search, Google search and then go to the visual arts department and you'll go to the visual arts calendar and we'll have to get that up for you. Uh, so... Does that make sense to you? Does that help yes. out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free to put the um, website in the chat so that, or any or any instructions you want to put in that so people can make sure to get access to it. Yes. Okay. I just want to get back to my chat here. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop your sharing for you so you can. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I got to go back and find that. I'll find. I'll find that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other yeah. questions that people have right now? Yeah, can you, can you talk about again about the, the future of the exhibitions and, what, and where, you, where you see it going the next few years? Um, where we see it going? Well, like I said, because of the, the changes we had to make during COVID, I definitely think we'll be doing more of a, more of a digital, the online exhibition to coincide with the in-person ones. Um, something that we incorporated a couple of years ago that we had to stop during COVID, but I would like to start up again is 
we um, set aside one little section of the exhibition um, for people to respond to the show and to actually participate in it. And the way we did this is we we have these little um, pieces of paper that are um, set up on cardstock, and we had them hanging up on map tacks in the gallery. And um, what and it asked the same question as the theme: um, what the world needs now. And you could come up and take um, one of the card stocks off the wall and you could do your own little word and image and put your name on it and then hang it back up on the wall. Um, so you could kind of participate in the exhibition, whether you're a student or an adult or whatever, just a visitor, um, you can feel like you're a part of the exhibition. So like I said, we had to stop that during COVID, but I, I hope to bring that back, so. Perfect. All right, well, thank you again for coming by today. Is there any final thoughts or anything else you want to expand more on uh, before make sure you can enjoy the rest of your day? We, uh, I just posted the, the site that you can go to the visual arts um, gallery there and oh, they perfect. click on the links. There's a lot of other shows in our district and, and stuff like that. One of the things I'll just like to share um, as a final note too in our community, Pinellas County, you know, really, really supports the arts. And in Pinellas County, our taxpayers for 12 years have voted positively to tax themselves more, a half a mil of their property taxes and 80% of the money enhances our teacher salaries, but 20% is um, split between visual art, music, reading and technology. And the visual arts in Pinellas County Schools has seen such an incredible support monetarily and that way we really have an equitable program K through 12 in all of our schools, no matter where you're located in our district. And, and I also think that this has also bolstered up our private schools and our charter schools art departments because we've all, we've raised the bar for everybody. So we wanna thank the Pinellas County um, voters because they every year in our, in our last election, they voted like 72% to tax themselves again. Um, so we're very excited about that. So thank you again to our community and to the Maureen Arts Center who has supported students' endeavors in word and image. Awesome. All right, well, thank you so much, Sue, Riley, and Amanda for coming on today. Much appreciated and looking forward to seeing more of you throughout the rest of the event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.